Hello, Wonder Hussy here. In fabulous Stovepipe Wells, Death Valley, on a mission. Okay, we got a three car caravan and we're headed out to the western edge of Death Valley, to the western slope of the Panamint Mountains to look for a missing person. Okay, on September 30th, 2022, a blue Ford Ranger pickup truck was found abandoned about halfway up Goler Wash, an extremely remote and rugged canyon in the Panamint Mountains just outside Death Valley National Park. The truck belonged to 69-year-old Dennis Burton, a retired engineer from Southern California who'd been on a road trip around California and Nevada earlier that month and who was, apparently, suffering from memory issues. When found, the truck's fuel tank was completely empty, and Dennis had left a note to that effect, stating that he was out of gas. But other than that note, there was no trace of Dennis and no indication of which direction he'd gone. Dennis was last seen up in Lee Vining, California, near Mono Lake, on September 24th after which he apparently lost his wallet and was thus unable to refuel. Despite apparently intending to continue south on US 395 and return home to his wife in Ramona, California, for unknown reasons, he ended up taking a detour eastward toward Death Valley. Death Valley had apparently been on Dennis's bucket list, but inexplicably, instead of continuing east into the park, he instead turned south into the desolate Panamint Valley, where he apparently attempted to drive up Goler Wash before finally running out of gas. He appeared to have attempted to call his wife on the morning of September 25th, but there's no cell signal in the Panamint Valley, let alone in Goler Wash, and he was never heard from again. Temperatures at the time were in the upper 90s, peaking in the triple digits, and the terrain in Goler Canyon is rough, so it couldn't have been an easy place to try and hike out of, and it doesn't seem like he could have gotten very far. But even though many search and rescue efforts have been undertaken since Dennis went missing, no trace of him has ever been found. And 18 months later, most searchers have given up. Most, but not all. So we got a van, we've got a Jeep, and we've got an FJ Cruiser. Okay, I'm riding uh, with my friend Rich, AKA Uncle Gnome. That's Hi, everyone. Uncle with a K in the FJ Cruiser. Are we ready? We're heading out? Yes. Let's go. Now, since it's been almost a year and a half since Dennis went missing, this isn't really a rescue mission so much as it is a recovery mission. Although you can never say never, it's pretty unlikely that Dennis is just has been hiding out at Barker Ranch or someplace like that for all this time. But at least we might be able to find his remains and provide some kind of closure for his wife and his loved ones. Although I know closure is cold comfort for anyone who's lost a loved one. At least if we find his remains, they can be properly interred. What do you think, Rich? What are your thoughts on this case? First and forma, foremost is closure on this issue. If you can imagine a loved one just vanishing, never a word, you'll understand what we're going through. We want to help Mrs. Burton find her husband. Yeah, Rich is recently retired and you've always enjoyed driving around the desert, exploring, off-roading. You have the perfect skill set to assist with uh, recovery missions like this. Yeah, I, I feel like my whole life I've been preparing for this. I grew up in the desert at a bar still. Um, some of my best early childhood memories were going out with a, uh, a team called Rescue 3 out of Barstow. Rescue 3. And Mr. McQueen, my neighbor, taught me how to build rigs, how to work with radios. Mm -hmm. and in fact, they took me out, uh, I think I was probably a, a 
12 or 13, somewhere in there, to a recovery at a mine shaft north of, north of Barstow. And that was the first time I'd seen a dead body that had been out there. For oh, God. And how old were you when this happened? I was around 12 or 13. Wow, so your formative years. And um, that knowledge that I gained at the time stuck with me. And over the years, I've been slowly preparing for something like this. Yeah, your uh, FJ is well equipped. You've got radios. You've got recovery gear. He's, in fact, the whole back of the FJ is full of all kinds of gear. We are locked and loaded and ready to go. Now, like I said, we are part of a three vehicle convoy. Uh, and so when we get where we're going, I'll introduce you to the woman who put this whole thing together. That's right. We weren't just randomly headed out to the desert to poke around. We were actually coming out at the invitation of the executive director of a foundation that continues to search for missing hikers even after all other search and rescue operations have ceased. I certainly don't have any official search and rescue skills or credentials, so at first I didn't want to come along as I thought I would only be in the way. But as the day unfolded and I learned more about this foundation, I came to understand that all help is appreciated, even if it's just someone making a YouTube video to help publicize a case. Okay, we made it to the base of the Panamint Mountains and the little ghost town of Ballarat. I haven't been out to Ballarat in a few years. I used to come here all the time. Awesome. Ballarat trading post with all kinds of interesting stuff everywhere. All kind of old rusty mining implements. Old spur. Old frying pan. Old oil can. All kinds of cool stuff here in the Ballarat General Store, including souvenirs. They have t-shirts. Now look at that. Ballarat Ghost Town. They got coffee cups and they've got stickers. But most importantly for my purposes, <laughs> they got restrooms. Much better. Okay, let's go see if we can meet some more members of our expedition. Okay, so we've already met Rich, Uncle Gnome. We also have Linda. Linda, you're driving your Jeep. Yes. Okay, and then we have the brains of the operation here. This is Kathy. Kathy, you're the reason we're out here in the first place. Now, what's, you have a foundation? That you I look, do. You look for missing hikers? We do. What's the name of the foundation? So the foundation's name is the Fowler O'Sullivan Foundation. Fowler O'Sullivan Foundation? Yes. And that's named after two of the missing hikers you're looking for? Chris Fowler, who uh -huh. went missing on the Pacific oh, yeah. Crest Trail in Washington State, and David O'Sullivan, who went missing uh, in San Jacinto Mountain near Idlewell on the Pacific Crest Trail as well. FOFound.org. Yeah, if you go check yes. her website out, it's really interesting, actually really, frankly, sad all these missing hikers that yeah, you, you've helped. But you do, like I was talking about this earlier, like the concept of closure is cold comfort because you right. know, it's, you're not bringing the person back. But I feel like I would want to at least know what happened to my loved one, you know, and you do bring some comfort to people. Absolutely, because you know, there's nothing we can do to bring them back, but we can find them and um, you know, get them to their family so they have answers. Right. And then they can have, you know, as, you know, it's our nature to have a ceremony when someone dies. Right. And they can't even do that. So, you know, we call it, it's called ambiguous loss. Ambiguous loss. Yes. And um, it's when, you know, you lose someone, but you don't know why. Or mm -hmm. maybe they are alive and you have to keep that hope until you're here differently. Absolutely. Also, it's you know, we, you know, we have our peer support group for families. Oh, right, yeah. You know, to help each other. Yeah, support groups are huge. I yeah. mean, especially when you're waiting for answers and you don't know what happened. Right. Now, at this point, Kathy had already been out here to the site a couple times just to get an idea of what the terrain was like and to try to put herself into Dennis's shoes and maybe get an idea of which direction he might have tried to hike. This expedition would involve more of that, but the main reason for our trip today would be to identify and establish a base camp for the main search, which will begin this coming weekend, March 2nd and 3rd. Kathy's hoping for as many volunteers as possible to come out, camp with the group, and take part in organized, gridded searches of the canyon and valley below, looking for any trace of Dennis Burton. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in doing, 
and you have the necessary skills and gear to camp out in the middle of nowhere with no water and no facilities, just keep watching and check the description to this video for GPS coordinates of where the camp ends up being placed. Yes. Okay, so we're out here today just kind of planning what they're going to come back out and do next week. I'm pretty interested in this whole process. So thank you for no, I appreciate inviting me and thank you for what yes. you do, man. I mean, check her website out. It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, back in the FJ and we're headed out to Goler Wash. Are you ready? You're familiar with Absolutely. Goler Wash. You've driven all these canyons, right? Yep, I am old. All right, quick pit stop along the way to check out the recently formed lake in Panamint Valley. Look at that, because of all the rain, there's actually a lake out here. Kind of like the Lake Manly in Badwater Basin that I just canoed on. I don't know what the name of this lake is, but it's pretty spectacular. Unfortunately, it also means there's gonna be a lot of mud and all the recent major rain events, including last summer's Hurricane Hillary, also mean that any trace of Dennis we might hope to find could have been washed even farther out into the valley or even buried in the mud. Even though it might look like a timeless prehistoric landscape, a lot has changed out here in the last 18 months. Okay, as we approach Goler Canyon, Kathy and I decided to swap. So that means I'll be riding with Linda. Yeah, I get to ride in Linda's Jeep. Look at this. Woo wee. And she's got the top off. So that'll be good footage. Okay, here we are heading up Goler Canyon. <laughs> Linda said I could stand on her seat and shoot right out the top of her roof for an even better view. This is where poor Dennis's truck was found. Somehow he made it all the way up here. And this is not on most people's radar. Okay, Goler Wash has kind of a creepy vibe, even in the best of times, because it's notorious as the place where Charles Manson hid out with his family back in the late 1960s after they murdered all those people in Los Angeles. They set up camp at the abandoned Barker Ranch, way at the top of Goler Canyon, and ended up living here for quite some time before finally being captured by the Inyo County Sheriff's deputies in October of 1969. So even without knowing that Dennis Burton had possibly met his end out here, it felt pretty spooky to begin with. I've been up Goler Wash a few times myself over the years, and it's a notoriously rugged 4x4 route. On one of my expeditions, my friend and I had to build up the road as we went along, and on another trip, we even had to be winched up over a dry waterfall. But apparently, the county graded it recently because it wasn't nearly as bad as on my previous visits, so I could see how Dennis would have been able to drive his Ford Ranger a considerable distance up the canyon. Okay, Linda just informed me that we're coming right up to the place where his truck was found. He made it this far up Goler Canyon in his brand new truck. So I'm thinking it was about here. Never having been to Death Valley before. All right, let's get out and take a look around and see if we can maybe put ourselves in this poor guy's footsteps. I think this little sign here is clearly visible in the background of the picture they took of his truck when they found it. So he must have been like right here on the road, not far from where we're parked. And so now the question is, which way did he go? I mean, you would think your truck runs out of gas in the middle of nowhere. Well, you just go right back downhill the way you came to the closest civilization. But he had dementia, he wasn't thinking clearly. He was probably dehydrated, which would have added to his confusion. And, you know, once the sun came up, he would have also been suffering heat exhaustion on top of all that. 
So he wasn't thinking clearly, and so maybe he did hike up Canyon. In which case, there's probably hundreds of possibilities. All these little side canyons he might have gone up. He might have climbed up the side of the mountain to try and get a cell signal. Because I guess he was, or he had been, checking in with his wife regularly uh, the day prior to his disappearance, I think. And then she just didn't hear from him anymore. His cell phone quit pinging. Although there's really nothing for a cell phone to ping out here anyway. I mean, needless to say, there is no cell signal <laughs> in Golar Wash. And each of us kind of has our theories. Kathy seems to be of the mind that he continued on up the canyon because she said his house key had been disconnected from the rest of his keychain. And so it was almost like in his confused mental state, he felt like, oh, okay, his car stopped. Oh, I'm home. I pulled in. I just got to keep walking until I get to my house. And so he took his house key and just kept walking until, well, until he got to his house. Now, Rich was of the mind that he probably walked down Canyon back towards the last signs of civilization that he would have seen, which was Ballarat. And then just past Ballarat, there is a mining operation that he may have seen some trucks coming and going from on his way up. So he would have known that there were people back down that way if he was thinking clearly. But we just don't know how clearly he was thinking. It is true though that if you look up the canyon here, it doesn't look that steep and it looks like if you didn't know anything about what was that way, you might think that was the, way out of here. the best to go, yeah. To the top of this hill. Little did he know, there ain't nothing up there. I mean, you go no. to Barker Ranch and you go over Mangle Pass and then you're in Butte Valley, which is super desolate. Yeah. And you're many, 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 many more miles from anything that way than he would have been if he would have just gone downhill. Right, right. But we don't know. We don't know. It's unfortunate that this note that he left on his truck just said out of gas. You know, usually if you break down or become stranded in the backcountry, they advise you to stay with your vehicle. But if for whatever reason you can't stay with your vehicle, which in his case, he didn't have any food, he didn't have any water. You know, they found one empty water bottle in his truck. Staying with his vehicle, I guess, wouldn't have made sense. So then I think they do advise that you leave a note saying the date, where you're headed, you know, what's going on. Well, he had the presence of mind to leave a note, but all it said was out of gas. So we don't know when, what time of day, what day, where he was going. And even though there have been many, many searches for this guy over the past 18 months, like I said, I mean, it's almost overwhelming how many possibilities there are out here. Which is why it's so cool that Kathy was able to round up this many volunteers and they're willing to come out here and set up a base camp. I guess everybody or most of the group, plus others back where I live, are planning to come out here next weekend and camp out for like a week or more and do a very methodical grid search. Which is certainly a better method then everybody just running around like chickens with their heads cut off, spouting different theories. But Kathy was lucky. She met so many folks that had the appropriate gear and the f flexibility of schedule and the willingness to come out and do this. I mean, Kathy emailed me a couple weeks ago asking me if I knew anything about Golar Wash. She was looking for somebody to take her up to Golar Wash and look around. Well, I had stuff going on. We were doing our flea market fundraiser or whatever. But I told her, you know, come to town. I'm sure there's somebody here who could help you. And well, she did. She came to Tacopa and she found all these people that were willing to come out and help her. And I, if there's any kind of silver lining in this situation, it's how willing people are to help. I mean, there's another guy with us that doesn't want to be on camera, the guy in the van. And he doesn't even really know anybody here. He's not even from Tacopa. He just happened to be camping at one of the campgrounds. But he, he said something about this really spoke to him or stirred him because he really wants to help this guy's wife and family again find closure i hate to even say that because my understanding from reading and listening to stuff about victims of crime is closure doesn't really mean anything but i think it's better than not knowing hey we're gonna go up to this mine Okay, now we're gonna try to drive up this side canyon to where there's an old abandoned mine and some cabins or old buildings. Yeah, maybe we can find something up there. 
That's the frustrating part about this search. Even though they found Dennis's truck in a canyon, there's all kind of side canyons and burrow trails he might have taken, not to mention abandoned mines he might have gone into. The Panamint Mountains are full of old camps, and Golar Wash certainly has its share. Barker Ranch isn't the only abandoned cabin in the canyon. So a thorough search would require exploring every possible route Dennis might have hiked, however unlikely it might be. Wow, I have never been up here and this is amazing. You can see clear down all the way into the Panamint Valley, the whole way we just came. Wow, let's go check out this view. Look at that, man, you can. You can see all the way to the Panamint Valley. So we basically just snaked our way up Golar Canyon and then took this little side spur up to the, uh, I think that was the Keystone Mine that we just drove through. Anyway, uh, we're gonna have an amazing view from the top of this road above the Keystone Mine. Let's see. Wow. Look at that. Can't see quite to the bottom where Rich's bright yellow FJ Cruiser is, but it just, again, gives you an idea of what kind of terrain this is to be looking for the remains of a single guy. Talk about trying to find a needle in a haystack. But that's exactly what Kathy and the Fowler O'Sullivan Foundation try to do. Even after all the other search and rescue agencies give up, Kathy keeps on looking. Okay, we have driven pretty much to the top of Golar Canyon. Dang near all the way to Mangle Pass. And obviously we're not gonna stumble on this guy's remains just driving up the main road. But this is more of a way for everybody to get the lay of the land so that when they come back here to do the real search, they'll kind of have a better idea of what they're in for. Okay, I don't know how much farther we wanna go because if we go over this pass, we'll be in Butte Valley. And I don't think this guy could have could have or would have hiked that far. All right, let's see. Oh, wow, yeah, there's the view. Miles and miles and miles of desolation. It could be anywhere. Even though we didn't find any concrete clues or evidence on our recon mission, aside from some burrow bones Pat spotted in the bushes, just being out there was a sobering reminder of how vast and desolate this country is. Even if Dennis had just walked back down the canyon from where his truck ran out of gas, there's still the mind-boggling expanse of the Panamint Valley at the mouth of Golar Wash. And everyone agreed the valley floor would be the best place to set up camp for next weekend's organized grid search. Okay, we came back down out of Golar Canyon. And what we're gonna do is, well, we're hungry, you know, we've been hiking and driving around all day. So we're gonna go into Panamint Springs and get some food. But before we leave, we wanna set up a base camp, okay? When uh, everybody comes back here next weekend, we need a place big enough for multiple rigs to set up camps. And so we found this big, wide, flat turnout, not too far from the mouth of Golar Canyon. And this is where the camp will be. So our friend in the white van is actually gonna stay put here. He's gonna hold down the fort. He's already loaded up with supplies. He's got plenty of food, water, everything he needs. So he's just gonna stay out here. And he doesn't wanna drive all the way to Panama Springs just to have a cheeseburger. So we're saying our goodbyes and we're gonna go get a bite. All right, we are all starving and ready for a burger. Rich, are you ready for a burger uh, or some kind of food? I could eat the south end of, well, you know how that one goes. Uh, I'll admit, it felt kind of weird to basically eat, drink, and be merry on such a somber mission. But I guess it's important to remember that the searchers have to live their lives, too. Especially with everyone gearing up to spend an extended period out in the field, away from any kind of civilization other than the Ballarat General Store. Morale is definitely key, 
But still, as we enjoyed our burgers and beers, I couldn't help but think of Dennis Burton's wife and of Dennis himself, still somewhere out there in that lonely, desolate valley, waiting to be found. Whew, that was delicious. But now it's time to make the long drive back over to the east side of Death Valley, back to the hot springs. All right, Uncle Gnome, am I riding with you? Yes. Okay, Rich, uh, how do you feel about the day's search? Well, I think it was very productive. You do think it was productive? Yes. Okay, even though we really didn't turn anything up other than those burrow bones. Absolutely. Now, Rich, you were saying that you're fired up by this. Like Absolutely. this whole experience really fired you up and kind of gave you like a whole new, I don't want to say reason for living, but- how About purpose. Purpose, yeah, it gave you a whole, new, a whole purpose. new purpose. Cause you're, you're retired now for how long? Uh, about five months, five and a half so months. So you're newly retired, you know, you, what are you gonna do next? What's the next chapter in your life? And this really fired you up. Absolutely, this is something I've always wanted to be involved with, but I always felt like it was beyond my reach. And now it's been thrown into my lap. Yeah, now you've fallen in with a band of searchers and, well, hopefully you guys find Dennis and many more people after that. Final thoughts, Kathy. You need volunteers. Yes. And you need volunteers who are willing to go up in the canyon and help search, but also you need people that just want to hang out at base camp, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's something for everyone. We need someone at base camp for communication, cook food just to be there. Somebody to keep an eye on camp. Yeah. yeah so don't think, oh, I'm not in good enough shape or I don't have the requisite right. skills. All are welcome, right? Absolutely. All yes. right. So if you want to feel really good about yourself and yes. feel like you're part of something good, uh, I'll right. put the information in the uh, description. The coordinates just show up, right? They don't need to contact him. They just show up. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Kathy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do, Kathy. You're helping more people than you probably realize. Thank you. And hopefully you'll be helping many more people yes. who will find a new purpose like Rich did in helping find people.